Okay, so can I go on, yeah? Okay. I quickly say what might be wrong, then uh, some small statistics about Debian Devel. Um, then I did some research on what other projects and or distributions are doing with regards to their um, de de development list. Um, also about what possible codes of conduct are around in the free software communities. And then in the end, maybe a couple of points, a point across again. That kind of stuff I think is a bit more of a problem for me personally. And also like what I consider a bit off topic and uh, bike shedding. Like we had, a, we had a really long discussion about how long descriptions should be formatted. And that's something that, I mean, didn't warrant the amount of messages, I think, that it, that it had in the end, which were several hundred or so. Um, I think the major problem generally is that lots of Debian developers, at least in my opinion, and when I talk to them, uh, are not subscribed anymore because they say, well, it's just too much volume or the signal to noise ratio is just not high enough for me to bother. And that's a bit of a fragmentation of community. So I think there was an example a couple of days ago when uh, somebody was very surprised suddenly that uh, Bash is going to be replaced by Dash as a, as a shell. And then he said, well, nobody told me. And then they said, well, there was lots of threads on Debian Devel. And he said, well, I'm only on hash Debian. I don't read Debian Devel, so how should I know? And, and that's sort of like, and then started a big discussion on hash Debian about it, which again resulted in a thread on Debian Devel. So there's some fragmentation of community um, going on as well due to people not following hash, uh, ha not following Debian Devel and thus getting different ideas or starting threads all over again. That's what I gathered. Is there already <laughs> some, some people think, is there some different problems already that, uh, or that, that I didn't mention that people think there are? Not for now. Okay. So this is uh, the post per month of Debian Devel, as I gathered since 1998. Can you see that? I just made it a bit bigger. And until today. So what you can see is that, well, of course, it's quite scattered. But I mean, it was pretty high at 2,500 until Ubuntu started. I don't know. I mean, 2004. And, and since then, it's mm, getting down. Yeah. So now, like, there's a leap here to 2,000, well, 100, one, like, below 2,000. And now we're around 1,200, 1,000 maybe even. Uh, there was quite a lot of posts in March. I think that, sorry? <laughs> well, I don't think it's about using Ubuntu because this is a develop mailing list. Maybe it's just that people started discussing development stuff on the Ubuntu list. Not that, I don't know. I mean, actually, I didn't thought about it until now. I, I didn't think about it until now. Just 2004, I think, was when, when Ubuntu started. Yeah. I, I don't want to be, I, I, yeah, sorry. Raphael? Yeah. That it goes down or? Sort of like, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. It's, it's getting better in some sense. Raphael, yeah? Is it not on? Yeah, okay. I can repeat. Oh, there, there's another one coming. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, uh, it's another possibility is uh, that, well, around that time we started Alias. And uh, with that ca comes the possibility to create mailing list easier for uh, okay. mm -hmm. uh, small teams. And maybe m most of the discussion went in other projects, other teams, uh, could, more could fo focused. But well, well, I think it's a tendency. I've heard that several times that uh, well, they don't discuss stuff on Devil, but prefer to use other, other lists because uh, they find Devil too noisy or too Which crazy. is perfectly valid, in my opinion. Huh? Well, it would be still cool to have some reports uh, on generic lists because, well, we, you can't follow everything and uh, we are all interested in new stuff that goes on. Okay, maybe on we on. can just discuss that later on. Okay. Um, Steve, 
Did you want to just say something? You, you raise your hand, or is it? Nothing actually. Like, so okay. Well, anyway, the trend is that it's going down, uh, and it's keeping around 1,000. So it's not as high traffic as it used to be. People can reasonably read it, maybe, at least in a news gateway. Uh, yeah, as I said, there was a lot of March. I think that was when we were discussing whether Debian copyright should have all the authors listed or not. There was a huge discussion and a couple of others. So March was a bit bad in terms of, oh, yeah, March. Uh, but okay, not, not like in days before. So, and I got another statistic of the last six months or the first half year of um, 2009 which is the blue is, I don't know whether you can, yeah, St Steve, please. Um, looking at the graph actually, thinking is the tail off due to maybe more of us pushing people to Debian project for project related stuff instead of Devel? I didn't, I didn't graph that, but that's actually also something we could look at. No. Okay, so this is, um, the posts of the last um, six months. The blue one is, as I said, March was pretty high, is all traffics. And what I find interesting is that 20%, roughly 20% of the mails on Debian Devel these days are ITPs or reply to ITPs. So always around 200, that's the, that's the red one. So quite, I think, a surprisingly large amount. I didn't think it was so much, like 20%. And uh, the white one is, I might consider off topic, which, uh, yeah, we'll, well, I'll talk about that later, what, what I think might be on topic or off topic, just, and it's not so much actually, um, and it's very hard to, to measure. I, I didn't really check, I mean, what I certainly think is that there's a lot of off topic in the sense that they shouldn't be on devil as in replies to threats, so I didn't check that, I didn't check every message, but. Certainly in this Debian change log, long description, uh, yeah, Debian long description thread, there were a lot of messages which could have just been uh, skipped, I guess, stuff like that. But this, this is just complete threads that I think are um, off topic. It's not so much. So what are other projects doing? I mean, I only knew about Ubuntu a bit. Um, so I was thinking about what, what other distributions or, or projects are doing. So Gentoo. Um, and it's also about their moderation guidelines and stuff. Can you, is there a problem or can you, okay. Uh, so Ubuntu uh, has a, gen, uh, sorry, Gentoo first. Uh, Gentoo Dev is the um, general proposed mailing list. It's um, surprisingly low traffic, only around 500 mails a month, but uh, quite volatile in terms that usually it's like, yeah, well it's 500 in average, but there's 250 to 800, so also um, quite volatile, as, as maybe Debian Deval is as well, depending on the flame war du jour. Um, there is a moderation team. I, I emailed Donny Burkholz, which is the only Gentoo person I sort of know who is in, interested in their community, and he told me that they have a moderation team, but it's really rarely used, so it's almost not being moderated at all, and certainly not uh, the messages are let through, and maybe if somebody is really totally disruptive, they, they might get expulsed or, or um, moderated off the list. So it's a bit the same as we do in Debian, I guess. So no, and uh, yeah, then there's Ubuntu, and I'm, I'm not a specialist, but so please uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there's a Ubuntu Deval mailing list, which got, uh, got, has like 200 to 300 mails a month, so also rather low traffic compared to Debian Deval. Um, and as far as I understand, non-developers, as in people not associated on Launchpad with either Ubuntu Core or Ubuntu Moto, as far as I understand, will get uh, moderated. The usual, so there's people looking at it, and if it's a genuinely interesting or relevant post, they, they will get lit through, but otherwise not, as I understand it. And uh, general users or non core or like other developers are supposed to use Ubuntu devil discuss mailing list, which is uh, several times bigger, mostly like three times bigger maybe uh, a month, which of course also changes. 
So that's quite chatty. And I never really looked at it, so I don't know what the signal to noise ratio is there. But I, as I understand it, it's not moderated in so far that um, people can post there. And only if they really are disruptive or breaking the Ubuntu code of contact, they might get moderated. OK, so next up, Fedora. 2,500 mails per month. I was really surprised. So the Fedora Devil in Bliss apparently is, is several times bigger than Debian Devel. 2000, and consistently over 2,000 mails per month. And there was a recent uh, blog post by Mr. Jay Keating saying, fixing the fail that is Fedora devil list. So they were also unhappy about it. And they recently uh, started doing something in the terms of um, started having a mailing list code of conduct and um, actively enforcing it by a, a set of moderators. And it's, as far as I understand, um, it's not moderated per se, but if somebody is off topic or too chatty or whatever, or not, I think that I'm coming to that in a second, but their code of conduct is basically be excellent to another or to each other. So if somebody is not that, they get a one day timeout. And then if it's after that they start acting up again, then the, uh, the Fedora board decides in what, what's going to happen next, whether they get. Uh, like a month timeout, or they get banned from the list forever, or they get expelled from the project. So yeah, and that was a very recent thing. So I think it was in May or, or June or something, like only a couple of months ago, that they actually started doing something about it. And so it's not really visible on the Fedora Devil list ma mails per month yet. So I don't know whether it's going to be get down or what's going to happen with it. But it's it's really high traffic. Uh, oh, yeah, by the way, somebody on uh, the kernel mailing list can tell me how much it's about roughly per month or something because I'm not, I'm not there and I didn't really have the time to check. But it's probably much more than 2,500 a month. Maybe 2,000 a day? I don't know. Quite, quite insane. Around, it's about 300 per day. 300? 400 per day. Per day, okay. So, what, 10,000 a month or something? Or even more, no. Yeah, OK. OK, so GNOME. It's not a distribution, but um, I've been subscribed to the desktop develop list for a couple of years. And I know it, so I wanted to bring it up. Because I think it's, it's working really well uh, in terms of uh, signal-to-noise ratio. Uh, but it has to be said that GNOME had to, had went through several iterations. So they had a GNOME devil list, I think. Or, and there's a GNOME hackers list. And in 2001 or something, they finally started doing the desktop develop list. And I didn't really find any announcement about it. But as I understand it, it was uh, solely for cross-desktop purposes. That is, if there's anything wrong with one particular m module, file a bug in Bugzilla. Don't bother posting it to desktop develop. Um, it's only if there's something which pertains to the whole project. And a couple of announcements like, uh, I have branched off this which is a bit annoying, because after every GNOME release, there's like 20 messages saying, I branched off this module, which I don't know why. But maybe now that they move to Git, it will happen. Uh, it will not happen anymore. But yeah, so there's about 100 to 450 mails per month, so rather low traffic and quite volatile. And as I said, it's mostly desktop-wide and specific announcement. And it's interestingly pretty much self-maintained. That is that. Uh, it's very rare that developers themselves have long discussions among themselves. And also, it's quite often that if somebody from the outside s tries to start a discussion about something and people think that it's not appropriate on that list, they immediately get told, like, sorry, this is off topic, please file a bug. Or, well, if it's related to GNOME development, they might get an answer or told, please go there or there. Or otherwise, they just say that it's off topic, go elsewhere, please. And I talked to uh, Olaf Witters while well, I sent a mail. Because there was a recent, quite recent, extraordinary um, flame war, and it's still ongoing, <laughs> about uh, whether GNOME should support other kernels than Linux. And it's always uh, a source of fun. And there was one guy bashing. OK. Um, there's a, there, was one, there was a big flame war about Solaris and whether it's relevant or whether GNOME should care about Solaris. <laughs> And, and people obviously thought that was a bit inappropriate because Sun was doing a lot for GNOME. But there was one guy who was 
pushing this, and, and he's also a developer, so this was rather extraordinary. And then one of the sysadmins and or list moderators, Olaf Witter, said, well, this thread is moderated, please don't um, post to it anymore. But I asked him, and he said, well, they're not really moderating things. Uh, it's usually working, it's very rare, and what they're doing, they just add a rule in the mailman um, setup to kill off that thread. So if people start posting with a different subject, it goes on again, which I think is the case, but anyway. So, um, and there, as I said, it's mostly self-maintained, and uh, people are doing quite well. Okay, in OpenSUSE, last, last example, I'm, I'm trying to be a bit more quicker now. Um, it's not very clear where the development list is because they had, don't have a devel list, so I was thinking, is it maybe hidden? And I don't have very good connections to OpenSUSE. I asked one guy I know, and he was saying that, well, oop, there's OpenSUSE packaging, which has about 180 mails in June. I didn't check the whole year. Interestingly, OpenSUSE KDE has 170, oh. and OpenSUSE marketing has 320. So about quite some more than the packaging list. Uh, and also quite some more than most of the others. But there's OpenSUSE factory, which has 450 mails, and that seems to be sort of like the general proposed mailing list, as in it's not it's for stuff which is not packaging related. So I'd like to package this or I have a question about RPM or whatever. It's about general development. So they, they're keeping that apart as far as I understand. So the packaging is split off to another list. Yeah, so at this point, does anybody have any other good or bad examples about mailing development, mailing lists of other projects I missed, which are maybe interesting to the discussion? Okay, then the, the like last part is code of conduct. So Debian has a list code of conduct. I looked it up again. I personally think it's difficult because it's really big. It's like 15 points and it's very unclear. I mean, there's like, please don't, uh, I don't know, I mean, like configure your mailer appropriately or, or don't, don't top post or something like that. And then there's the stuff about um, don't do flame wars because it's impolite, no, it's yeah, impolite or something. And, and then there's this uh, CC thing, which, no, there's a CC thing and then there's no, f no cussing because it's, uh, it's, pr a, it's a problem with packet radio. And, and no flame wars because, yeah. It, and, and, and if you look at that, I mean, I have to admit that if, if, if you say that somebody in, is, who's new in the community looks at that and is like, wait, packet radio? I mean, this can't be, this can't be, code of, this can't be the code of conduct because I don't know. I mean, this, there are one or two persons maybe still getting it on packet radio. And, and it looks really like it's like an, either it's an excuse for, well, we have to do this flame wars stuff. We like flame wars, but well, there's packet radio, so we don't accept it, or the other way around. Um, uh, well, we try to find a, a reason. So if, if you think that packet radio is relevant, then please don't flame, otherwise it's your own problem or something like that. So I, I think it sends like a mixed message. Uh, and it's also very, very verbose. So, okay, so as I said, Fedora has a pretty small code of conduct, which is be excellent to each other, and then there's one paragraph of explanation what excellent means. And uh, there's code of conduct for some others, like GNOME, who originally, I think, used the Ubuntu code of conduct, but they slimmed it down rather drastically. So it's just focusing on positive behavior. Did you have a question? Okay, sorry. It was just seeing. Um, so it says, like, be respectful and considerate, be patient and generous, assume people mean well, try to be concise. That's the four things, and then there is one paragraph each for explaining what they mean with that. And uh, they explicitly say that uh, this code of conduct does not explain how it's going to be enforced. This is up to the community or, or the people running the community. So nothing about like, if you do this, you get sanctioned or something like that. And also the Fedora stuff, I have to say this, I think it's not really set in stone yet because it's very new. So uh, it, there is no URL really to that. Then there's the Gentoo code of conduct, which is um, also in draft. It's, it's only a proposal. And it also focuses on negative stuff as well, uh, which I found interesting. So it, it says roughly the same, like GNOME on the positive stuff, but it also says, 
like flaming and trolling is bad, posting, participating only to incite drama or, or negatively is bad, being judgmental, mean-spirited or insulting is not welcome, and constantly purveying misinformation as well. So they go some length to also say what they don't like and not just what they want. And then there's the Ubuntu Code of Conduct. As I said, it's, it's rather similar to GNOME, uh, which is expected as I think GNOME sort of ripped it off of Ubuntu, um, dropping the Ubuntu uh, stuff out of it. Like, and um, it's, it's also a bit more user-oriented um, in so far as uh, like when you are unsure, ask for help. Stuff and, and what's interesting, which I didn't know until yesterday, is that it, Ubuntu also has a team leader co um, code of conduct, which so they they hold their team leaders to a higher standard. I didn't know that. That's quite interesting. And so, team leaders should be even better to you, to the community than than the general people. So that's a review of uh, the code of conduct. So uh, and the, so the last slide, and then let's move on to some discussions. What, what could we do? Like, that's what my um, stuff is. What, what I, like. So first of all, we think we could, if, well, if anybody, every, only, OK, let, let's do it this way. Like, who thinks there is a problem with Debian Devel? Or, or let's say the other way around, who thinks that Debian Devel is running quite well right now as is and doesn't need any change? Uh, OK, so who thinks it's, sorry? Yeah, please, be there. I have to say, I honestly don't know how Debian Devel is running because it was so verbose and so irrelevant to me that about three years ago I unsubscribed. So I must tell you that based on the plot you showed, I'm encouraged that maybe it's gotten better and I'm certainly willing to go take a look at it again. But I'd have to leave it to other people to say whether the current state is, is good okay. or bad. Well, that's actually good. So, okay, so who in the room is uh, subscribed to Debian Devel and, le and reads it at least? Partly or, or skims over the thread. Okay. And who expressly unsubscribed from Debian Devel a couple of years or months ago? Okay, Martin Michelmeyer never read Debian Devel, or what? Okay, you read it. I, I didn't see. Yeah? I did the contrary. Uh, a few years ago, there was a lot much uh, post and I cannot subscribe to Debian development and uh, I only look at the archives. Okay. Okay, so uh, I think most, uh, at least most of the people seem to be subscribed if I got that right. So who thinks that it's, 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 there is a problem with it and, and it might be fixed in one way or in another or might, could be improved at least? Okay, a couple people, uh, more or less, okay. So, Steve. While I would agree there's always room for improvement and we could be more efficient and, and happier and, and fun, whatever criteria you use for improving the mailing list, um, I think today it's serving its purpose rather well. Um, and I don't find myself getting mad very often at what I read on the mailing list, which maybe that just means I'm old now, but maybe it means the list has gotten better. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so now, okay, I put up some points. Um, the first is like, should we redefine or should we even define what is on topic on Debian Devel to make it even more useful? And um, I, I understand that's quite <coughs> uh, debatable. But so my one thing is, um, I think a general development list should be about things which are not about specific stuff but rather uh, important to the sort of whole distribution, like packaging issues which pertain to more than one package. So, okay, so we, we're, changing, we're changing Apache to uh, packaging in that way, and all the dependent modules have to uh, be changed. Um, what do you guys think? Something like that. Um, and not like, I'm going to do this leaf package, this game, we, we, we're moving to this and that packaging thing or something like that. So having stuff which is relevant to mo at least more than a couple of developers, because I guess otherwise you could just use a bug reports or stuff like that, or more focused mailing lists, as also uh, Raphael already said. 
And uh, the other thing which might be on topic, I think, is non-packaging development of Debian, which should always be on topic on Debian Develop, like, um, I don't know, stuff in BTS link or, or things like that, um, which is not packaging related. So that's the first thing. Then we might consider rewriting the list code of conduct, because as I said, it's sort of like old-fashioned. It's, it's very non-directed at anything. So uh, also we could at that point think about making it useful for non-list communication because I mean there's a lot of stuff which is only useful on mailing lists, but maybe we will also have a code of conduct for um, IRC or, or well we don't have web forms that much, I don't know. And we could model it after one of these simpler uh, floss code of conducts. Like I think the GNOME one is, is rather okay. It's really short, and it's not. Uh, pointing out so much. I mean, there's room for general, uh, general consideration or something like that. And then there is the stuff about the CCs. I mean, I'd like to also discuss that a bit, because there was a pretty long thread a while ago, and uh, it seemed a lot of people are getting annoyed at that problem, as in that they, I mean, it has to be said that apparently, I think that Debian is one of the few distributions where uh, having direct CCs is really uh, unfriendly and people get mad about it because in other upstream projects and stuff, people constantly get CC'd on replies. So maybe I w we can also do a small straw poll, like who, hey, sorry? Could you explain what this problem is? Okay, so in, there, in the Debian list code of conduct, it says don't CC people if they're on the list. So if you reply to the list, configure the, your mail reader appropriately so that mail follow up to or reply to is um, is acknowledged and, and and then the problem is that we always like every couple of months we get a rather big discussion about whether that's, this is still appropriate or not so and I was just wondering who is totally annoyed by getting CC'd first do the straw poll and then yeah okay please Actually, because of this very issue, the code of conduct now has a statement that says you must or you should not complain about being CC'd on list. <laughs> Send okay. it privately if you need to. Um, so I mean, this is something that but it comes up no matter what. Uh, even though it says in the code of conduct not to complain, people still do it on list. Um, so. Was that actually changed recently? Yes, I okay, did. Right, right. So, yes, it's changed. Yeah, right. So I, I think that's also very important, at least. I mean, if there's a problem with non-on-topic stuff, it should always be sent uh, maybe privately. Yeah, please, Steve. So I'm not sure how helpful this observation is. Uh, I prefer not to get CCs, but I'm not nearly as annoyed by people CCing me as I am by the people defending their refusal to honor the mail follow-up to that I've set that says I want to not be CC'd and like justifying it uh, in terms of, oh, well, MFT will never work correctly anyway, therefore there's no reason I should do what you ask me to. And it's mm. like, okay, yeah. Yes? Lately, I don't have a lot of time to develop, so, uh, I would like the CC uh, um, regulation to be brought altogether because uh, sometimes mm, there is a topic in which uh, somebody thinks you mm, could be interested and I thank mm, the people who CC me because uh, I receive all the emails but that, must, that mm, does not uh, necessarily mean that I read all of it. So I would be in favor of dropping the CC regulation. Right. I mean, there, there's two different issues, I guess. There is the issue of people replying to your posting, CCing you, and you don't like that, or people replying to any posting and thinking, well, Santiago might be interested in that. I'll, I'll put him on CC. Otherwise, he might not notice. That, that, I mean, the last thing is certainly all right. I think the former is the one which is discussed by some people. Steve. Yeah, exactly. Um, I w would much prefer to always get CCs the way I read most of the Debian mailing lists is through a local mail to news gateway. So uh, oh, if mm, I don't get an explicit point. CC, the chances are I, will, I, will, I might see the response, but it will be buried in, in the middle of that mail, in, in the middle of the news group. 
Um, if people, um, you know, if I've responded to something, I would much rather get direct CC, so I get it in my mail client as well. Enrico. Um, I can't be bothered about CCs. If I get an extra CC, pressing these extremely quickly, I am extremely bothered when I try to follow all this discussion and mails begin with three or four line in square brackets like, no, I would like to see, no, I wouldn't. I've set my MFT and I wouldn't, or I would, or yeah. anyway, please. A and you need to scroll down to see what the hell is going on. I mean, in it's even in other, in the open Monco mailing list, it's even worse. We got like three or four different mailing lists created for no reason whatsoever, whatsoever. And you have mails that like, don't you see me? And this message should be in that list, so I see, see that. Please don't reply in this list. Which, sorry, which community is that? The Open Moco one. Open Moco? Yeah. Okay. Because mm. they, they, they were very ambitious. Very they technical created people. created hundreds of mailing lists where okay. no one writes. Be there? And they still try to enforce it, which is funny. I was just going to say that if we... <coughs> If we look back in history at when that clause was added to our current code of conduct for the list, there were two things going on. One is that a lot of mail client software wasn't nearly as good as the mail client software we have today. And most reasonable mail clients today make it possible for you to configure it so that you only see messages with a given message ID once. And if you're using a mail client that doesn't do that, I don't have a whole lot of of you know, sympathy for you. And the second thing is that that was created at a time when many more people were having to go to much more complex measures to actually participate in mailing lists than they are today. The internet has become much more pervasive on a worldwide basis and the cost of right. participation in the internet has gone down. So the, I, I also have very little patience for people who want to modify my behavior to save themselves you know, 1% on their mail traffic each month or something. It's just, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I guess like most people are not too bothered by, by getting CC. Or yeah, I just wanted to say also, I, I'm also part of the people who are not bothered with CC and quite like them. And uh, we recently changed code of conduct to say, well, if you really don't want CC uh, and you are bothered by someone doing it, just reply privately explaining that and not on the As list. As is already the case in the code of, con code of conduct these days. Yeah, yeah. Other, otherwise but yeah. Or, or, or it sparks a new substrate about stuff we don't care about. Yeah, okay. I, even to further underline this, I mean, the right place to complain, uh, and if you see threads like this, the right place to complain is to file a bug against listmaster, or list.debian.org on the BTS. Those are the only people who can change the code of conduct or alter this behavior. So right. uh, discussions on Debian Devel about it are off topic. Okay. So, um, then there's two other points which might be reconsidered. As, as I said before, like OpenZuzu has a, special, has a um, packaging mailing list. So for example, well, what I think is that we have the Debian Mentors mailing list for new people in the community um, so they can ask questions about packaging. But on the other hand, we have like old time developers popping up again and asking sort of like things you would expect a new developer to ask on mentors on Debian Devel because mentors doesn't really apply to them. So they're asking, I don't know, I've been a Debian developer for 15 years, never did a shared library. Uh, how, how is this supposed to work or something like that? Or uh, I don't know, stuff like that. I mean, the, the, we could be uh, considered to have a special mailing list where packaging things are um, discussed or, or questions are explicitly asked there and and only have like, as I said, stuff which pertains to more than one package or non-packaging development of Debian to it. Steve. Shouldn't that be the Debian mentors mailing list to a certain extent? Which and one? Debian mentors. Yeah, right. It's so just, just because somebody's been a Debian developer for 15 years doesn't mean that mentors isn't the appropriate venue if they have questions that are about things that are areas that they're not familiar with. We could also do that. I mean, on the other hand, Mentos sort of like, uh, it's also, I think it's also for non-packaging stuff, for new maintainers probably, like how to get into the community and things like that. So it might be, uh, in a sense, it's also very much for new maintainers. So there might be a lack of focus if, if you have it for new maintainers and for packaging question, but we could always also do it. I mean, it's, it's something worth discussing. 
Enrico? Uh, one thing that I didn't use WDevel for in the past and I start to use it now is just a sort of peer review place. Mm -hmm. In the past, you post your bit of code because you don't understand how it works or you want to get help. It was kind of likely that a couple of persons would get you flamed and maybe because that they thought, you know, it was a nice time to humiliate someone or there was this perception that it could happen. So I wouldn't suggest it to people. Whereas now, even if I maybe don't do it often myself, but sometimes I do it and it's quite helpful. People did get back to me and help. Uh, and uh, I do suggest it to uh, NM w when I do AM work. It's like I I if you have a bug that you tag help, do also ask for help in the develop because it's likely some people will be interested in the little technical problem and get help. I, I wouldn't have done it in the past because I would send someone to be flame grilled potentially and I didn't know if their shoulders were large enough to skip the first two or three crappy things and, and get the useful bit. I think now it gets useful for that a and I feel quite lucky because it's really good to have a sort of general place for peer review if needed. Obviously, low kind of, I just started packaging this package peer review goes on mentors, but um, I know this problem is not trivial or it doesn't look trivial to me. Um, that sounds like the bell. Okay. Use case that I think is quite good to. So that's sort of like a different opinion? Um, yeah, I mean, so just gathering opinions now. The last thing, which like comes from my statistics stuff is maybe thinking about splitting off, like to cut down a bit more on the traffic and make it more focused, we could split off the, the WNPP or the ITP traffic list. I mean, that hash uh, dash WNPP exists, but it's, uh, it's a bit of a different thing because you get like one year old replies to bug reports about, hey, do you still want to package this or what's the status or you get all these process stuff when people fix it eventually. So what people are probably interested in is like getting ITPs and being able to review them and discussing the ITP itself and not necessarily the package. So that could maybe be split off to another list where people who are, because personally, I don't really, I mean, I just skim through the ITPs. I don't read them all. Um, I mean, sometimes if something is, seems really interesting, I'll look at it. But uh, I don't, I see it as a bit more like a noise thing on Debian Develop, but certainly that's different to people. And, uh, but on the other hand, people who are really interested in that sh would probably be able to, to subscribe to some more focused list. Raphael? Yeah, uh, I am in the same, uh, I feel it's quite the same like you. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't read much of them other than the other and I also think, well, Debian Devil is really the central mailing list where we decide what Debian is and Debian is about packages. So we must somehow keep something there. I don't think putting it on another list is a good idea and it not list all of them. Maybe we could drop part of them. I don't I like, well, shitloads of uh, Perl modules. Uh, it's not a, it's a library. It's not really uh, something that user will use. It's not something uh, that matters m much. And maybe all those ITP could go to the Debian Perl list and similarly for the uh, quite high volume stuff. But in general, I think it's worthwhile to keep it just to be able to say, well, do we really need uh, that software? We have already this one and this one uh, because yeah. Okay. Uh, we still, well, that, we still have to have the discussion of the usefulness for the user. I mean. Right. So maybe we could just, I mean, people should condense uh, like 20 new Perl packages which uh, had to be packaged for this new thing into one list mailing or something and then file bugs without CCing Debian Deval. That could be a thing. Stefan? I think uh, it's uh, useful if a lot of people are skimming through the ITPs because sometimes a package already was in Debian and was thrown out for some reason and the, the p person posting the ITP doesn't know or a very similar package is already in Debian and then the people can comment and I think it's completely appropriate if you just uh, skim the subjects and then comment if something okay. interesting comes up. Somebody else? Was it? Yeah, and, and I think that oh, if, look, if we sorry. try to move the ITPs to, a, well, to move some of the ITPs to a different list, then you have the question of which one should be moved, and it will be really hard to define which one should be moved. Okay, Maybe yeah. uh, we should have some rules that, for example, for Perl modules, modules, there's no need to send them to Debian Devil because it's true that most of Maybe them yeah. are well, and we know that Debian Perl does a great job. So, 
Okay. But in general, I think it should continue to be in the end. During one well. of the Perl team meeting, there was an idea brought up that ITPs for Perl related packages might, instead of going to Debian Devil, to the Perl mailing list and maybe game related packages to Debian Devil games. And that's certainly interesting. Yeah, I mean, if there's a really good functioning team for that kind like of that. stuff. It's probably much better to, to have that reviewed on, on that particular list. Maybe that's also something to keep in mind. Yeah. Well, I think the focus should be between uh, something. Uh, well, maybe I think uh, we need to review stuff which concern final use directly, and maybe uh, stuff like libraries really are. Well, we if there is a library that someone needed, so it's probably useful to someone packages, but uh, not all software. Are for user are needed. Okay. Well, okay, so um, let's cut it here a bit. I mean, is there other things people would like to bring up which they think are problems or which they think is working well or have issues with some of the stuff that, I mean, certainly I, I'd like to have some feedback. I, I'm not going to start a GR tomorrow about enforcing stuff. I just wanted to bring it on the table and have it discussed a bit. So there's like 10 minutes left. Um, is there stuff you would like to discuss? Yeah, Gaudens? Yes. Uh, one thing I would like to know what other people think about this. I quickly skimmed through the threads that were on Debian Devil uh, the last days or so. And what I noticed, I think the problem is not that we need to redefine Debian Devil, but what to do about threads that are going long and are off topic. So there's this dash thread. I, it's very long. I didn't read it. I don't know if it's off topic at, at now or not. But there was, for example, this uh, GPG key signing thread spell, uh, spilled over from, Deb, from the DebConf list to Debian Devil and things like that. If we should be more enforced that this doesn't happen, these right. things don't happen. I mean, I, I try to, for example, there was also a thread about well, Debian, the universal operating system, which I thought was non-technical pertaining to the project, so I asked the author privately uh, that I consider it not off topic on Debian Devel and Debian project to be the better list, and, and the author said, yeah, you're right. So, uh, I mean, it's, but on the other hand, if you, if you do it uh, publicly, then other people might consider that it's off topic and not respond. It's a, it's a bit of a hard question. much or tell people off um, but, but yeah personally I think that we should use project more people should probably also be subscribed to project if they're interested in Debian as a whole or if they're really only in, interested in technical stuff then they should just refrain on commenting on non-technical stuff on Devil and maybe I don't know how the actually this is implemented maybe uh, Don can uh, can say a word about it if, you, if it seems to be that a lot of threads also uh, swap over or come from Debian Devil and Nouns, say, uh, where Debian Devel is just a standard default uh, reply to. Um, so if people send something to Debian Devil and Nouns, which is obviously non technical, uh, I think we should tell them to set the reply to appropriately. Is that honored by, by the list or is it forced to Debian Devel? So yeah, if there's no reply to set, it sets it to Debian Devel, but if there is one, it, it keeps it present. Okay. So and, and that's a decision to whoever posts to Debian Devel announced to set properly. And I think, sorry, I mean, it's probably not that much problem, but it, it could be considered to maybe like moderating uh, replies to, to project or something like that. I don't know whether that makes sense or that whether it would cut a lot of stuff. Well, yeah. uh, okay, so is there other things people would bring up? Yeah. I would just like to underline what you already mentioned. The idea of telling people who are off topic privately that you think that they're off topic and please use this list instead is really important. The best way in my mind for this sort of moderation to occur is for people to get an idea of when they're being off topic, when they're being non-useful on the list. Um, and the best way to do that is in a private message that comes from multiple people. So you it's, think it's a private message, okay. It, it's extremely powerful when somebody who is being rude or whatever on the mailing list 
gets 50 messages from developers who are respected saying, excuse me, but you're, you need to be more careful about what you say to the list, uh, or please communicate to the project in this manner instead. It's way more um, personal, it's less threatening because there's no record of it, and right. it's more likely to cause change. Um, and so those are the things that would be better. I mean, I try to do it, but I'm only one person and I can only right. send so many private emails. Um, Like, okay, you already made that point in the thread, so as a, as a private thing, it's not necessary to bring it up again. It, people who are interested should read the whole thread, also before replying. And even two private follow-ups to say, this was a really excellent message that summarized this thread, thank you for contributing it. I mean, stuff like that. That way two people know too that messages that in a single message uh, obviate the rest of the thread I mean, so you can read a message and, okay, yes, now I understand the entire thread are, are really useful. Okay. So, uh, in any case, I want to say that uh, yeah, people who unsubscribed, uh, people who unsubscribed from Debbie Newell should maybe give it a second chance. These days, there's less traffic. It's certainly also less flame wars. It's just still a bit off uh, chatty or so, and, and if we sort of tell people Yes, Micah? Um, a problem on Debian Devel that I've found <coughs> particularly annoying is the um, is the fact that a lot of discussions are uh, unbounded and unbounded, there's no end to them and there's no clear um, decision making process or facilitation or this is a discussion period and then the discussion period ends and we're going to have a proposal to move on. Uh, the, the discussions tend to be this amorphous blob that continue on forever until I hit the thread delete button and I'm just sick of it. Uh, and that's one of the major reasons that I unsubscribed from Devel is because there was really no process for dealing with these discussions that had no end. Okay. And we needed to actually come to a decision like there's a lot of great points here but if we just float off uh, how are we going to make a decision about some of these I things? Mean, one thing I would like to say is that like a group <coughs> of 40, 50 people right here, if they concentrate on... Trying to make it a better list by um, suggesting to people privately that they're being off topic or by making sure that... I mean, the thing is, if the threats are smaller... the same thing so everybody can make Debian develop a better place I guess and uh, we just need to work on it and, and give it a second chance so, roughly. Uh, one thing is what is really annoying is when someone really uh, takes over the thread while, uh, because he replies everywhere and I think it would be nice if we could somehow enforce that the one who has the right to respond more is the one who initiates the thread because he wants an answer he wants to guide the discussion somewhere useful and uh, he simply can't do it if someone else is replying everywhere and diverting the discussion. So, well, at least we could formalize it somewhere with a kind of conduct that, uh, well, uh, you should not take over a thread. I don't know we can formulate that. We can find some words better than mine, but uh, you should not take over the thread. You should uh, leave some time to others to comment uh, because, well, uh, I, s I just say that because uh, it's that what I did for the depth stuff and it works quite well. The discussion takes longer, but it's more informative and, uh, well, everybody can do that. Okay, well, we have to stop here. Thanks, everybody, for participating and uh, let's hope it's getting a better place eventually. Or